Hello and welcome to Las Vegas to the sixth annual edition of the Infrastructure Summit produced by Structural Research. Joining me now on the sidelines of the event is Doug Recker, president of Tours Technologies Group and founder of Tours Edge AI. Um, Doug, pleasure speaking to you. Last time we saw each other was a few thousands of miles away right, in the middle right, of the Pacific. Right. Um, how have you been? How's the first 10 months of the year to you? Great. Been busy, good. been stressful, but good. Yeah, yeah. yeah we're, we uh, just finished a race, so we're out running hard right now, so mm. it's great. Mm, nice. So this year has been full of headlines. Whatever you look from m to energy to edge to, to telecoms to satellites, it's been a really, really active, busy in the industry. The theme of this conference here is concurrence. So we're talking about AI acceleration, supply chain restrictions, uh, sustainability, energy demands. From all these forces that I mentioned and any others that you think of, what forces do you think are going to be the, the ones that are really going to define the next growth phase um, for data centers and digital infrastructure? More yeah, I, I think you know everybody's been talking about everything. You know, it's not a secret. Power is probably one of the biggest issues right now. You'll see the expanding with the AI. Um, I also think connectivity, right? The mm. building of the fiber networks is big, and then obviously purchasing. You know, your mm. your all the products that need to fill these data centers are all backlogged. So it's all a timing issue. So you, you know, when they say that data center is going to be up in eight months, it's it's pretty incredible if that happens, but you know, it, procurement's an issue. Um, but all this is flowing r so rapidly. I think the biggest issue, obviously, is power and procurement at this point. Yeah. Well, we know there's a lot of exaggerated headlines out there when yeah, it comes yeah, to gigawatts sure. and the uh, timelines of production. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. It's, 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 it's amazing. Yeah. Well, it's an energy business. So if the energy is not there, you technically cannot build it. it. That's right. So That's it's right. as simple as that. But you guys have recently announced some expansion of your own. So I think it's Waco in Texas? Um, yes, yes, Waco in Texas, yes. And uh, the, the goal, obviously, for us this year is 15 data centers, micro data mm. centers in Texas. And uh, we have six on the ground already. Yeah. Uh, we will hit that number by the end of the year. And it's, it's, yeah. been, it's been great so far. Yeah, but it's definitely grown from the last, since the last oh, time absolutely. we spoke back in January. Right. It, it was um, more of a dream. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> now it's becoming a reality. Hope right. no nightmares yet. <laughs> no, no, so far so good. Yeah. But, so when we look into a, a location, what actually goes into selecting the markets or the place where you're going to deploy something? Sure, great question. So our really our focus is the tier three and tier four markets mm -hmm. where connectivity is all in the US. So it's interrupt, but all in the US. Yes, all in the US. Yes. yes. So so really the, the main focus is right now Texas for us. Mm -hmm. um, we see the need in the tier three markets there. So we've really been deploying with the education and healthcare systems in those markets. Mm -hmm. and the main reason we're going to those markets is because connectivity mm -hmm. is an issue number one, obviously, and then latency and all these new AI products that are coming out, they'll be able to do this kind of application mm. once we have our boxes in those mm. markets. Mm. Okay. And then, of course, going into underserved markets, so places with like less densely populated, you've already mentioned connectivity as a, one of the challenges, one of the issues going to those kind of markets. What are the challenges that are out there when you go to these places, and how do you overcome them to do your deployment? So basically, the main challenges we see are in the education mm. system. So they don't have the robust networks out mm. there that they would say like in a Dallas or a Houston, right? Mm. They don't have multiple carriers that are mm. there that it can actually peer together. So what we do mm. is we bring that basically that, that box, that little mini data center out there, so multiple carriers can come in mm. and cohabitate together, cross-connect together, and create a stronger network in those markets. Mm. Mm. And talking about stronger networks, you've recently also got the uh, patent yes. uh, approved. Yes, we, we um, actually just got awarded our first yeah, patent. Yeah. Right, yes. And it's, I mean, it's called the module data center entryway. Yes, which, it's a, basically yeah. it's a clean room. And yeah. what's really cool about this patent, and once you deploy pods like we've done over, gosh, the last almost 10 years, mm. you see different issues come up over the years. And what we found out mm. that Basically, in these in a modular data center, you open the door and you're actually in the data center. It's different mm. than having a big brick and mortar. The issues you see over a few years is mm. dust comes in. Even though you have filtration in there, dust comes in and gets on the servers. So after two years, three years of compute, they really bog down the actual server. Now you're talking cabinets that have close to $2 million worth of gear in there. So we created what's called a clean room. So basically, you walk into the clean room, you open the door, you shut the door behind you, the system kicks on for about 30 seconds, blows all the particles and filters the whole room. Mm. And then the green light comes on and then you can actually enter the data center. So, it, mm. and it works multiple phases too. It also works as a man trap. So there's authentication that has to happen okay. and we can audit it. Mm. Okay, are you going to commercialize the, the, the offer beyond Duo's Edge or are you going to keep it for you for now? Uh, keep it for yeah. us for yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. And that's, <laughs> keep, that's keep really a, the... a huge angle that we have in the market. So, <laughs> um, And then I guess these things, they also come with, with partnerships. You have to partner with others because what we're living right now, no company can solve it alone. So partnerships are part of the ecosystem. How do you look into partnerships? What makes a partnership 
something that's appetizing to you that you want to do business with? Um, and where, where are you looking at at the moment that can bring you some extra resources sure. um, into the business? So the main thing with our business and deploying our pods is you have to have fiber, right? So mm. your partnerships have to be with the actual carriers. So we have a great partnership right now with Fiberlight. We're looking mm. at partnering with other carriers. And why we partner with them is when we go into a market without mm. fiber, you're just a box, right? Yeah. And you go with very strong networks. You go with carriers mm. that have robust networks, and that's why we did our partnership with mm. Fiberlight, and we'll be looking at others. But basically, when we go into a market, we're there for the carrier. So now they don't have to put the, the CapEx into the infrastructure mm. in that market. They can just co-locate with us, and now mm. it's an OpEx model, which they mm. like. Okay. Well, of course, your business model is working. It's expanding in the U.S., and I know I've already asked if it's on U.S. at the moment, but do you have any plans in the future? Will the dream go beyond U.S. borders? I, I think once we, mm. get, once we get the handle on it and we hit mm. our numbers that we told the street mm. for this year and next year, I, I definitely think we'll start going into mm. like South America. Mm. Well, South America, this is interesting. Any countries in particular? Uh, can, yeah. Maybe we'll, we'll talk yeah. about that soon. Well, because we, yeah. we just had the big open air announcement, $25 billion for Argentina. We're still trying to yep. figure out how that's going to happen. Yep. But if you have any thoughts about that, yes, we can chat no, about it. No, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So that, that's a definite market for us, yeah. obviously. So, yeah. so we'll oh, talk probably more about that at PTC yeah, when yeah. we see you. I'm sure we'll, we'll have news by then, I guess, <laughs> yeah. in three months' time. <laughs> that's right. Um, and then, well, actually, the last time I saw a PTC as well, you were just the founder of Tours Edge AI. Now you're the president of Tours Technologies Group. So talk us about how your role has changed in the last nine, ten months, because uh, you're wearing a lot of hats now. Yeah, sure. So the Duos Edge AI is our modular data mm. center. So Duos Technologies Group is basically the public entity. Mm. So I just became the president of the public entity. And the main reason we did that is because we're actually going into the data center sector. We have the, the data center, obviously, pods, but we're entering another realm, another business. And basically, we needed somebody with the data center experience. Mm. So uh, that's why we... We pro I got mm. promoted. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, yeah. congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> if you're looking to the, the, the short term, what would be your two, three top priorities um, for the business and serving the market? Yeah, r right now, our, our main priority is getting the 15 on the ground and then um, getting the actual leases in these markets, right, mm. and deploying them. Then we go back, you know, we typically, when we go to a market, we have a customer, mm. like anchor tenant, and then we go back and we fill those. So mm. really, the, the, the team's vision right now and responsibility is to get the pods on the ground with that key customer and then we expand from there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then quick question on the investment side. How are you financing the operations? Is it still all organic or are you going to be looking at some outside capital? We just finished a raise. So mm -hmm. we just raised 45 million mm -hmm. um, and we closed that. We don't think we'll need any more okay. um, basically investor or cash money after that. Mm -hmm. We'll leverage our um, our growth based on our revenue and, and our infrastructure that we have in place. Yeah. So we, we financially, we're extremely sound yeah. and we're, we're real positive and looking forward to our earnings call yeah. Try in November. To, yeah, do it organically. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. funny yes, that way. Yes, exactly. exactly. Uh, well, Doug, I can't wait to speak to you in PTC in three months' time, see how things have evolved even more. Me too. Uh, it's for nothing, so, yeah, absolutely. But for now, thank you so much for talking to me yes. uh, at Infrastructure Summit. Um, as for your home, thank you for watching and do check our website and social media for the latest digital infrastructure news from across the world. At the Tech Capital, you lead. We report. Bye for now.